Hello and welcome to episode 10, Surviving Missiles. In this tutorial, we will go through some of the things you can do when you encounter a missile salvo aimed at your ships so that you can increase the longevity of your ships within the game. So the first thing you can do to survive missiles is good positioning. Positioning is important in Nebulous Fleet Command as we have the options of three-dimensional movement which we don't have in other games. So we have this option to use terrain to our advantage. We can do this in two ways. The first way is using the terrain to block our radar signature. Currently, there is an unknown fleet on this map that we can't see. Why? Because its radar signature is hidden somewhere behind this terrain where I know it's deployed. Even the pinard can only provide an approximate location, but it still needs to have the ship provide line of sight. It won't go through an actual piece of terrain. So knowing this, we can use the terrain to mask our ships, and if the enemy can't pinpoint where our ships are, they can't target them. So we know that hurricanes require the launch ship to not only maintain the track, but also communications with the missiles for the duration of flight. If they can't see where those ships are, they can't launch to begin with. And if the ship goes behind terrain and the launch ship loses communication, well, those hurricanes then become useless. We spoke in tutorial nine about how we could use missiles to scout. However, ships have a finite number of missiles. They don't get replenished in space and have to go back to port in order to refill. So people can't continually waste missiles in order to find the exact location. Even if scouting missiles were deployed and found these two light cruisers, I then have the option to move away before the enemy can then launch another larger salvo. Or if they do, my ships may no longer be there. They then have to try and hedge their beds by spreading out the missiles, allowing my point defense to counter it. Again, using terrain, we're able to block other types of missiles, such as the gale, which the illuminators for the gales cannot go through the terrain. The other thing that terrain and positioning enables us to do is that when missiles are being fired, we can move behind these pieces of terrain to act as cover. Hypothetically, if the enemy fired missiles from this ridge, and they were coming in a direct line to us because that's the way they fired them. We can actually move our ship down below and get out of the line of sight from that cliff, which even if a few of the missiles start to home in and pick up our ship's radar signature, we're able to then draw those missiles in. And as they fly in, what they're gonna do is they're gonna hit this asteroid. Sometimes we may actually have to cross open space or we just get discovered. So this is where we can use the point defense of the ship in order to provide defense to both our ship and the ships nearby us. So what do we use? We've got four options for point defense, three of them being turreted weapons, which can fit on all holes in the smallest component slot being the two by two by two, or we have the point defense missile. So the first bit of point defense that we have is the Defender. The Defender can be likened to the Sea Wiz that you may find on modern day Navy ships. It's a fairly cheap option and in terms of its cost for the component, as well as the amount of ammunition that you can bring, its defining feature is that it's the only point defense turret that doesn't need to reload and continually can provide a steady stream of bullets at incoming missiles. It can track its own targets. However, it is best engaged from a front on perspective as when it needs to track targets moving laterally or curving around your ship, it actually finds it quite hard to do that. It also really excels for those missiles that aren't queued from multiple ships and simply sort of drip fed towards your ship being the target, especially from that head on position where either one or multiple defenders are able to home in, destroy one before moving to the next target at an almost leisurely pace. And that's the sort of scenario that you've been seeing in the clip playing behind um, this voiceover. Also, the defender has the smallest range of all of the point defense options coming in at only 1,750 meters. So the second option that we have for point defense turrets is the rebound. It's a flark turret that fires proximity detonating rounds at incoming missiles. Really good for when enemy missile salvos are grouped together and you're firing en masse into a wave. It is slightly more expensive than the defender. However, it is a lot cheaper in terms of power. So you you're more likely to see people taking rebounds over defenders. The downside of the rebound is that unlike other point defense options that are available to you, it doesn't have the ability to track its own targets. So it's entirely reliant on your warship sensors to be able to identify and then point and direct the rebound onto the incoming missiles. It does have an autoloader capacity, so I'll fire 15 rounds 
every 0.3 seconds, and then it'll take three seconds to load. And these can have modifiers applied to it to make it even faster in the compartment and module parts of your ship in the fleet editor. Uh, finishing off the rebound, it has a slightly larger range than the Defender, coming in at 2,000 meters. That's going to give you about an extra second of engagement time compared to the Defender. The Aurora is probably the best point defense turret option within the game. However, it is fairly expensive, being 55 points and 700 kilowatts of power. On the plus side, it has the longest range of all the point defense turret options, being at 3,000 meters, and it tracks its own targets. So it isn't relying on the hull like the rebound. One draw card is that it does have the longest cooldown time being 30 seconds uh, after it has completed burst duration of 25 seconds. One thing to note with all the point defense turrets is that while some may be better or worse than others, it all depends on how you're using them and the ship build that you're going for. There's nothing wrong with putting in a smaller or cheaper point defense turret to eke out those extra points and add a little bit more defense to your ship as opposed to simply stacking all the auroras and limiting the options that you can put on such as additional missiles or upgrading components another dc option etc so so when you build your fleet just consider what you're putting where also make sure that the arcs that they're engaging in for your point defense turrets are conducive to how you're going to play that ship Putting a point defense turret at the very bottom of a light cruiser is probably not the best option as it's not going to have the ability to traverse and elevate and engage where, where missiles are likely to come from, which would realistically be the front and the sides. The other benefit too of point defense is that you don't have to put it all on one ship, spread it across the fleet so each ship has a little bit. You definitely want to have point defense on all your ships from sort of the destroyer hull up or the keystone up whether you put it on frigates or corvettes, that's up to you, your play style and your tactics. By putting them together or even grouping some ships together, you can maximize the defensive capability of massed point defense turrets. The final point defense option is that of the Riposte. It's a point defense missile. I'm not going to go too heavily into this as with, there are other videos on the channel that I'll link in the cards and the description. So what do you want to know about the point defense missile? Well, it's an interceptor missile. It has a range of 4,500 meters, which enables it to have the greatest standoff for all of your point defense options and a cruise speed at 300 meters per second, which is 100 meters per second faster than the missiles that'll be aimed at you. Like the rebound, it's got a blast fragmentation, so it's gonna damage all incoming missiles within a radius. And it has the ability that if it misses, it can come back around and try and engage that missile that it missed a second time. You also have a few different options to how you play them. They can be manually fired. They can be automatically fired. You can choose the salvo size through the options down the bottom. And you have the option to determine whether you launch these point defense missiles only when the launching ship is engaged or under threat. Or you have the option to defend an area of the 4,500 meters around the launching ship so that any ship that comes under threat within a ship that holds a riposte missile, it's gonna launch in defense of that ship, effectively providing a point defense missile bubble around other ships in proximity to it. At two points per unit, this is really, really cheap. So you're able to take a few of them on a launcher, a VLS 23 only being five points. So very, very small points expenditure, you're gonna be able to get a fair amount of defensive capability for your fleet. So that's all the point defense options. Whilst we've got those on our fleet, we do have a one other trick up our sleeve that we can equip onto our ship, and that's the chaff decoy. So the chaff decoy will deploy a cloud of highly reflective strips of aluminium that will disrupt the targeting systems of radar guided missiles. So this will affect your thunderheads, and it's also gonna affect your gales. Remembering that your hurricanes are command guided, so they're not gonna be affected, and your squalls are homing in on your radar. So if you've got a radar on, it's gonna go for you. Chaff can be auto deployed and it's probably best to leave it on for newer players. You also do have the option to turn that off and only deploy it manually. Regardless of which method of initial deployment you select, you can continually fire chaff by pressing Shift Z as the hotkey to deploy more and more chaff from your VLS 23. Now as stated, that, that component's only five points, which is fairly cheap and chaff is only one point each. So for only 28 points, you can get a fairly good defensive option for your ships. Chaff is already pretty good if you are stationary. However, it is best combined with lateral movement away from where the chaff initially launched. So what do we mean? Have a look on the screen. What you're seeing is 
Thunderheads launched at a light cruiser, which is deploying chaff. It initially deploys chaff by itself, and then I deploy chaff manually about one every couple of seconds. So what happens, the Thunderheads go for the initial chaff deployment. As they start to go through, I deploy another chaff every few seconds or so, so that subsequent missiles have something else to go for rather than me. Now I've locked the heading using the H hotkey so that I only use my maneuvering thrusters because I didn't want it to spend or waste the time turning my ship. And then I just updated my movement order every few seconds in order to keep my ship moving away from the chaff. Ultimately, this enabled me to miss Ultimately, this allowed me to dodge all the Thunderheads that were fired at me. So the points that the enemy spent to shoot the chaff is, is significantly more than the points you spend to defend your ship. So just one thing to note, chaff does take a few seconds not only for it to deploy, but for it to get to its maximum coverage. So there's no point spamming all your chaff straight away when you start to move away from that point. What you want to do is fire a few and then as it starts to deploy, fire a few more. If you fire 10 in one spot, all you're going to do is make one big cloud, but as you move away from that spot, what's going to happen is the radar components of the Seekers are going to just reacquire your ship. So the final thing I'll quickly go through is jamming. So you want to use jamming in conjunction with other options that we've already discussed in this video. So you've got two types of jamming. You've got communications and radar jamming. Your communications jamming is only going to be effective against the hurricane missiles as they rely on the launch ship to provide the communications guidance onto the target being you. You don't want to jam squalls because that's going to allow them to home in on you. Although you're probably not going to see them if they're all mixed in and for a couple of them you may be worth just taking the hits and letting your point defense deal with any squalls that are mixed in. You want to use a radar jamming from the blanket jammers to defend yourself from hurricanes and from gales. So for the Thunderheads, radar jamming is going to cause it to lose its ability to track your ship. And you don't need to continually track that Thunderhead. You just need to be able to disrupt enough of it so that it veers off course and can't reacquire your ship. Noting that it isn't able to turn and re-attack like the Thunderheads. So there is no point um, continuing to jam Thunderheads that have gone past your ship. Gales use illuminators to be guided onto the ship. And as a result, the illuminators provide a much stronger signal to the seeker of the gale. However, you can jam gales, you just need enough blanket jammers in order to overcome the illuminators. This can be sometimes difficult for a lone ship that may only have one blanket jammer, or for smaller fleets that may only have one or two. However, for larger battles where you may have two or three players deploy multiple blanket jammers in the same direction as a missile swarm in order to provide the maximum disruption to the incoming missiles, this may not be a problem. So when engaging your jammers, there's two methods that you can apply. You can either use a position targeting jammer, so by right clicking into the space and selecting electronic warfare from a ship that has one of the jammers you wish to employ, so that way you can activate that jammer into the space that you think missiles will either be, enter, or come from. So one thing to note, if you do this, as you move your ship away, you're gonna affect the alignment of that jammer as it's based on the position of the ship, as opposed to the second method. The other method that you can do is you can actually target the missiles themselves. So remembering that the seekers for the gales and the thunderheads are in the actual missile themselves. So there's no point targeting the ships behind that are launching them. So what you want to do is engage your blanket jammers the way you would target a ship. But instead of targeting a ship, you want to target a missile. You do it the same way by right clicking on a missile. So you select a missile maybe towards the rear of the current salvo so that your jammer continues to focus in that direction and then engage it as you normally would. Same deal for communications jamming provided by the hang-up jammer. You may not always know which ship launched the hurricanes, so right click on the missiles that you believe are hurricanes and activate the jammer in the same method. The downside here is that these are command guided, so once a hurricane is no longer jammed by a communications jammer it'll and reacquires the link back to the launch ship, 
it's going to be able to operate as it normally does. So if it's if this occurs past the ship that is conducting the jamming, well, it's going to be able to come back around for a second option. This is where you hope that your point defense re-engages or if you have other ships around, they can support. So if we do everything right, can we survive missiles? Well here, a lone battleship gets caught out in the open where it is engaged by hurricanes and gales in a mixed salvo. So what does it do? Well first, it's not moving. So it starts to engage its manoeuvre thrusters to move laterally. As its flak, including the defenders and the rebounds, start to engage, it then deploys chaff and as it started to move, we can see that the chaff is distracting all the gales that are coming in. A few get hits as they try to go for the chaff. However, at, as it continues to put distance between, it can actually survives the majority of the missiles. Its point defense continues to engage and some, and it does take a few strikes. However, nowhere near as much as it would if it had done nothing. So this is a really good example of surviving a missile salvo. If all those missiles had hit, that battleship would have been severely destroyed. However, it lived to fight on for another 10 minutes or so. All right, well, that's it for this episode. I hope this has given you a bit of an insight in how to survive missiles in your first games. Early access should not be that far away or it should already have occurred. So have fun and I'll see you again.